Hello, crypto boys and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptmancer, where we feature content on play to earn games on the blockchain, such as Splinterlands. And in today's video, I want to talk about card watching again. This is episode two of cards that you should be on the lookout for in the market that are good values and some of the reasons and comparables on why these cards are good values. And just in my opinion, of course. And I'm gonna share with you a clip from last night's Splinterlands TV stream where we talked about one such card and I think you'll find the conversation interesting. So here's the clip and until next time, keep stacking those stats. I wanted to talk a little bit more about card watching. And um, you know, what I wanted to do is talk about another card that I think people are sleeping on and I think has great value in the market, and uh, I think you should be aware of. Now, we did episode one today. We pushed that on YouTube, so if you haven't checked that out, you can check that out on the YouTube channel, Tales from the Cryptmancer. But today, um, what I wanna talk about specifically is, well, it's actually another reward card, and it's actually in print, and it's actually quite inexpensive. So this card is an epic card. And can you guess which epic reward card that I'm talking about today? Any guesses? It's probably one of the cards I own, right? That would probably make sense. Any guesses in chat? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to break the surprise here. It's a lava launcher. And why am I so enthralled with the value of the Lava Launcher right now? Well, it's because of Conqueror Gossip, for one. The Lava Launcher already was a super good card, um, but he didn't really have a great summoner unless you had like Quid or Yoden. Um, but now with people being able to get Conqueror Gossip, this card really starts to shine because it's going to get the... Um, the uh, piercing for that five, that beefy five archery damage here, uh, along with scattershot, just to throw some havoc at your opponent. And what I like about the Lava Launcher specifically is its close range and its shield and health pool. It's got a total uh, durability of 13. And I use the term durability because I usually pull uh, armor and health together as just kind of a, another figure to look at, you know, as when, especially when you're talking about ranged durability or melee durability. Obviously, that doesn't apply to magic in this case, but the reason why I like the Lava Launcher at its current price point, which is uh, really cheap, one BCX Epic card is 12 cents. That's crazy, 12 cents. The burn, look at the, the, the power on this card is 100. The DEC burn here, is i mean close to that the dec burn is i think 10 cents on this card so you're basically getting this card right now for burn value literally these bots right here this thouja is giving this card away is giving away for pennies like two cents it's like saying take me please i need a home i need someone that loves me because this guy obviously doesn't now let me let me show you why this card is so good. Look at these stats. Five archery, three speed, 13 durability, close range, and stun. We didn't even talk about stun, right? Scattershot stun with piercing five damage. So good under Conquer Yasek. But what I want to show you to compare, right? I want it to compare to another fire reward card. I want to specifically compare it to Phineas Rage, right? Phineas Rage is an off tank. It has reach. It has four melee damage, so it has one less damage than the Lava Launcher. It has six speed, so it has three more speed. It has 11 health, so 11 total durability. It can be used in the second position to do damage. It has Oppress and Retaliate. Certainly a very good card, no doubt about it. I'm not dissing on Phineas Rage. In fact, I really like Phineas Rage. And that's why I'm comparing the Lava Launcher to this card. Because with Conquer Yasek, while you don't have to, 
you could put the lava launcher in the number two position as an off tank and use it like a reach off tank because it has the shield it has the health pool and it has close range but it has stun too which i think is better than oppress now retaliate the off tank doesn't really use that for the most part until it gets in the number one position so you can see in theory why i could make the comparison of Phineas Rage as an off tank as well as con or excuse me as well as a lava launcher as an off tank but what I want to show you to put things into perspective is this article um, talking about the reward cards this article came out June 29th of 2020 so roughly two years ago and these are the 14 reward cards that came out two years ago in June it was Crutch, it was Phantasm, Byla, Sandworm, Silver Shield Sheriff, our boy, Phineas Rage, the Kelp Initiate, and the Onyx Sentinel, Grim Reaper, Centauri Mage, Ant Miners, Captain's Ghost, Gordak Soldier, and Spirit Druid Grog. So why am I telling you all this? Why am I giving you a list of reward cards that came out two years ago? Well, Phineas Rage came out two years ago. He's now out of print, obviously. And if you look at Phineas Rage, his cost in the game, one BCX of Phineas Rage, who's a rare card, right? Not an epic card. He's a rare card that has similar capabilities to the Lava Launcher. It sells for $1.99. Let's just say $2, right? Let me take you back. Let me take you back here to the Lava Launcher, which if we can agree, but the Lava Launcher is comparable in stats to Phineas Rage. In two years, if you bought these Lava... Well, someone's been buying some Lava Launchers while we've been talking here. <laughs> someone's been buying... Not financial advice, guys. But uh, if you buy those Lava Launchers, I was going to buy them if you didn't after the stream. Uh, but if you buy these Lava Launchers for $0.13, cents, in two years from now, so let's say in September of 2024, when the lava launcher is out of print, if you could sell these lava launchers for $2 instead of 13 cents, that's a over 15 X on your investment in lava launchers, 15 X. That means as an example, if you bought a hundred dollars worth of lava launchers today, and if in the future it had the same trajectory as Phineas rage, which is a comparable card in the meta and for the fire team, even though this card is an epic card and has a stun ability, if you bought $100 worth of the Lava Launcher, in theory, you could have $1,500 two years from now, potentially, if you sold them two years later. Just like if you had Phineas Rages right now. If you had $100 worth of Phineas Rages from 2020, you'd be selling them for $2 a pop, as much as you wanted to, because people are buying that card because it's a great card. So this is why I think um, the Lava Launcher is uh, a card that should be watched again um, because when you do the comparables, you look at the meta, you have some history there, you can see where this could go once a Lava Launcher is out of print. And I hope this, uh, this little exercise has been informational for you and looking forward to seeing what you're saying in chat because I haven't been looking at chat here for the last five minutes. Let's take a look. So Rasakiran asking, do I prefer to sell them as one BCX or max level? So for me, um, right now I'm keeping them as one BCXs because I'm not really renting them out. Um, we'll see what happens over time. I believe over time, leveling those up and combining those will be the more valuable option for both renting and resale as these new rewards uh, changes go into play and people start basically trying to climb into gold and higher. So I do believe in the future, probably like gold level and higher combinations will rent and sell better than single BCXs. But for now, I'm just keeping any lava launchers I have as single BCXs. I haven't bought any recently. Um, I think the last one I bought was probably two weeks ago but it is on my list of stuff to buy. Again, I'm just giving you the info first, so you have it. I've got bids on the Lava Launchers in uh, Peak Monsters. They just haven't hit um, because, well, I'm 
I guess, cheap from that perspective. I want just a little bit more percentage on the APR there. Butters, yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah, we uh, we try and give the alpha here on stream. So when you join here, you get the information first um, before it hits the, the tubes, as they say. Uh, why doesn't Lava Launcher show up for the wind percentage in Sumner Lab? Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, bird, bees, and trees, I don't use Sumner Lab. Um, I just, I don't know where it gets its data from. And its data is kind of random. It's not, it's not like it's a, like a data feed like Commander Chaos is using, which is pretty much the entire blockchain. So I don't, I don't put much stock in the percentages there because just the sample size is just so few. So, so I don't know why specifically. There will be over 15 more times lava launchers than Phineas. Yep. And you know what, uh, Spry Quasar, that's a great uh, point. But what I would say is when Phineas Rage came out as a reward card in 2020, there are probably 15 times as many players in Splinterlands today than there were in 2020. And that's probably no joke. It's probably more than that, honestly. But what I would say is if the player base doesn't grow, right, and um, we don't add any new players, then, yeah, that would be problematic. Um, the assumption is that the game becomes more popular and that more players come into the game. And that's why that card would appreciate. But I will show you one other thing, because I think this is an important point. If we go here, right, let's go to the Lava Launcher. I want to show you some interesting stuff. It's going to involve some math, so I apologize if you don't like math, but we're going to talk about it. The circulation of this card is 222,496, right? Give me one second here. I want to show you something else. Let me pull up the print rate for this card. So the Lava Launcher is 63.7% printed. So it's got about one third left to go, right? So uh, let me show you this. Uh, yeah, here it comes. So let's say we add 111,000 in circulation. So when it's fully printed, Let's say there's going to be 333,000 lava launchers, regular foil lava launchers, by the time this goes out of print. Well, it takes 46 BCX to max this lava launcher. So let's take the final print rate of around 333,000 divided by 46. There can, at maximum for this card, be 7,239 max level copies of this card so if you want to play in diamond or champion and you want to have this card at max level if at any point in time there's more than 7239 competitive players in splinterlands that thinks this card should be part of their deck then the 7240th player is out of luck or all the silver bronze and gold players that have one, two, or 10 BCX of this, I mean, that obviously whittles this down as well. So just looking at the numbers, you know, you just gotta realize that if the game grows, like let's say right now, between Diamond and Champion, let's just say conservatively, you have a thousand players in Diamond and Champion combined today that play competitively. I'm guessing that pretty much 95% or more of the thousand players in Diamond and Champion today, either rent or own a max level copy of a Lava Launcher, right? So if we have a thousand players in Diamond Champion today, and this game grows by seven times, meaning, you know, let's say if we have 30,000 players today and it grows to 210,000 players in the future in two years, which is definitely possible, certainly is, then all of a sudden the Lava Launcher is the equivalent of Phineas Rage today. And if those numbers go higher, then obviously it's more valuable at that point in time. Next,